Hi there! So recently Xiaomi launched their 55 inch flagship smart TV, the OLED Vision TV. And I've been using this for about two weeks now, so I'll share my experiences, the good, the not so good, so you can decide if this TV is worth your money or not. Actually, this review would be complete if I just answered all the questions that everyone has been asking me ever since I posted that unboxing and impressions video. If you haven't watched it, I highly recommend you do because it's very detailed. I've spoken at length about the display, the build quality, the design, the port placement, the features, OS optimization, patch wall and even the sound quality. You can click the card up here. I leave the link for that video in the description. So we'll cover this review from an OLED TV's buyer's perspective and along with that, I'll share my experiences as well. Now, one of the biggest concerns for anyone buying an OLED TV is screen burn in. And for those who don't know, unlike LED TVs and QLED TVs that have backlight, OLED TVs don't have backlight. Each pixel is self-emitting light. Hence the name, Organic Light Emitting Diode. Now, the screen burn happens when, for example, if you let an OLED TV display a static image for hours at a stretch or when you're watching a news channel every day for months back to back and there's a channel logo and the ticker which is always present. Now that can occasionally exhibit something called as image retention. It's called screen burn. Now it's caused when OLED pixels have their normal brightness permanently diminished to a lower state. Now, firstly, this is a very, very rare occurrence, especially now that OLED TVs have evolved drastically in the last few years. Screen burn might sound like a big deal, but trust me, it ain't anymore. Companies are very well aware of the situation and they have taken measures to make sure it never happens. Like if there is a channel logo, it automatically identifies it and it reduces the brightness in this area to prevent burning. Then it has this feature called pixel shift. It basically shifts the image after a certain amount of time to prevent that image retention. And that's totally invisible to the naked eye. And this too helps increase the life of the OLED panel. See, screen burns should be the least of your concern with these new OLED TVs. They are not only smart when it comes to apps and interface, but it's also smart enough to realize how to protect itself. Like when we are on the Android homepage and it's left idle for some time, the screensaver kicks in in under two minutes basically reducing any kind of strain on the panel. Let me put it in the simplest way. If you're going to use an OLED TV like a regular TV, as in to watch movies, TV shows, gaming, news channels, or your favorite sports, you can forget about any kind of screen burn issues. Absolutely no problem. But if you're going to place a static image for long durations, like at a retail store or at an office, I suggest you go in for an LED TV. It will also be cheaper. Coming to the display, well, I can't stop raving about the blacks and colors this TV can produce. A few days back, I uploaded a YouTube shot showing the darkest scene of the dark night on this TV. The experience was jaw-dropping. Since OLED TVs come with self-emitting pixels, it can smartly control how much to turn on and how much to turn off, giving us those pitch-perfect blacks. The viewing experience on an OLED TV is unparalleled to any LED TV or even a theater for that matter. Trust me, seeing is believing. Then we also get Dolby Vision IQ and HDR10 support. Streaming Dolby Vision content is a visual delight. Check that out on Netflix. I highly recommend you watch some movies with dark scenes and see how you're going to find details you never knew even existed. Also worth mentioning, with OLED TVs, viewing angles aren't affected. It looks exactly the same, either you sit on the side or in the center, they are just spot on. Something no LED can do. Finally, I would like to conclude, if you are a movie buff like me, OLED TV is the way to go. No two doubts about that. For sports enthusiasts, it also comes with MEMC on board, so you can turn it on from the settings for a super smooth viewing experience. You won't miss a single frame. However, I suggest you turn motion smoothing off while watching a movie. Now the OS overall is very well optimized thanks to 3 GB of RAM and 32 GB storage. It's also running the latest Android TV 11 OS. Then yes, the much loved patch wall. Lots and lots in store here. Discover new content, there are live channels, there is quick access to news, there's section at the top dedicated for movies, TV shows, sports, kids content. There is just so much here. However, there are some small things I wish they could improve, like I wish we could rearrange these apps on the home page. And of course, the top section where we can see movies, TV shows, I wish we could custom arrange them as well. 
Again, these are not deal breakers, just suggestions. Then we also get the Mi Home app integration. It lets me access my Mi security camera on the big screen. And I can even pan using the Xiaomi TV remote. It's amazing. Now Patchwall is packed with content and above all, the most gorgeous smart TV interface I've seen. And on an OLED TV, it's even more striking. All right, now a lot of people have repeatedly asked me about brightness levels. Well, Xiaomi doesn't share the peak brightness level of any of their TVs and I'm sure they have their reasons for that. Also, let me tell you that there are other TV companies that also don't share. Frankly, for me, it's never about peak brightness. It's always about the experience the picture tuning, the color reproduction, the whole experience of the movie should be more important than just the brightness alone. And I'm sure you might think there's no harm in sharing those numbers when you can share others, you can even share about that. You got a point. However, I can confidently say that the images look really bright, they're crisp, they're very nice. And especially now that it can produce super deep blacks, the subjects stand out even more, making it even more brighter. Then this OLED TV comes with 60Hz refresh rate, which initially seemed disappointing considering a lot of people, including myself, was expecting 120Hz. But then I don't really game, so it wouldn't really matter to me. Now, unless you have the latest PS5 console gaming, which would take advantage of that 120Hz, it wouldn't be a really big deal. Also, it comes with auto low latency mode, and though I played very briefly, the experience was pretty satisfying. Then the Xiaomi OLED TV aces in the sound department. In fact, it comes with just 30 watt sound output, which might not sound a lot, but trust me, it gets loud. It has eight drivers with Dolby Atmos support and it provides really, really good audio fidelity. It sounds rich, it sounds bassy, it's sharp, it's crisp, and it's also got that good surround effect. I'm sure most of those who would be buying this TV probably wouldn't even need a sound bar. <laughs> Now if I had to pick out the cons, it misses that 120 hertz refresh rate and there's no VRR. Probably the only two things that are left out. However, I don't look at either of these as deal breakers. Xiaomi has done a brilliant job with their OLED TV. It's got a super thin design, hands-free voice system, it's got Google as well as Alexa support, excellent sound with the perfect display. OLED is the future, baby. Your movie watching experience is going to change forever. I highly recommend if you're looking for a 55-inch premium smart OLED TV. It's going on sale on 26th of May and it's going to be priced at 89,999. I think that's one of the cheapest OLED TVs you can get. However, there's another deal. If you have an HDFC bank card, you can get a flat 6,000 off, bring the price down to 83,999. I think that's a steal for an OLED TV. If you'd like to buy one, you should definitely check it out. I'll leave the links below in the description. Also, I highly recommend you watch the unboxing and impressions video. There is so much more different in that video that we've not covered here. That is going to be a totally different experience. The link is in the description. Do check it out. So I hope this video was helpful. If there are any questions, leave them down below and I shall definitely answer them. Until next time, cheers.